Hello, my little cubbies. It's your girl, Pandasm. And today, for Manic Monday, because of course, I forgot last Manic Monday, thanks to bullying, and because I'm doing this last minute, I thought we could have a little bit of insight into hobbies, and what's a good hobby to have. Now, we're going to focus on one hobby today, and that's going to be reading. Because reading is a great hobby. <laughs> Today I thought, my little cubbies, that I would recommend to you five of the books I have already read, um, and if they are part of a series, the series itself, and then I was going to recommend five books to go ahead and try out that I'm going to try out this year myself, and we're going to take a look and see kind of what the plots are, just kind of a quick summary, and just talk about reading in general, because I really think that we really need to get back into the reading of things. I know that I find the lack of time to be able to read sometimes, but it's more just my own, me coming home and wanting to be like, ugh, I need something mind-numbing, and then I just watch the same shows that I've watched like a thousand times like Bob's Burgers and then I quote every line to my boyfriend who gets slightly annoyed but that's beside the point <laughs> so I thought you know I haven't read in a long time I've been getting back into reading a lot so I'd recommend the books that I read last year um, there are some that I haven't completely finished with but I do recommend them still because I am still in the process of reading them and then there are some that I've already finished I really like the series and I want to let you know and then I'm gonna recommend some of the ones that I haven't read yet but I'm in the verge of they're on my next list <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump right in all right so the first book I'm gonna bring up here um, is by the author Becca Fitzpatrick and it is called Hush Hush now it is a uh, four-part series is really really good it's about an angel who um, comes down to earth, well actually he is a fallen angel, who comes down to earth to find the Nephilim that will get him back to being an angel again, or become human again. And the angel's name is Patch, and of course it is a teen drama love story. I love it. I did read it back in high school when I first started. I would read the series so many times in a row and it is still my favorite. Um, the first book is definitely one of my favorites overall. I think the second one is a little more kind of makes you hate characters, which which series doesn't. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I'll kind of read the back just so you kind of have an idea of what the synopsis is. So when Nora and Patch are forced together as lab partners, Nora would rather fall to her death than put up with his elusive answers to her questions. His teasing and his infuriatingly handsome face and hypnotizing eyes it seems Patch was put on Earth to drive her crazy, but before long, Nora's defenses start to break down as her curiosity about Patch heats up. Why does he always seem to be wherever she is and know exactly what she's thinking? How does she know what to say to both attract and repulse her? What is up with those V-shaped scars on his chiseled back? As their connection grows stronger, Nora's own life becomes increasingly fragile. Nora needs to decide, is Patch the one who wants to do her harm or the one who will keep her safe? Has she fallen for one of the fallen? Becca Fitzpatrick's New York Best Times de best-selling debut is a page-turning leap into the unknown world of fallen angels. Do you have someone to catch you? Do you? Anyway, I always really enjoyed it. Again, it is uh, more of a team-based novel, and it is a romance, but there is a lot of action, and there's a lot of angels and um, fallen angels and Nephilims, which are like half-blood angels, and just fighting and you know it's really really cool it's one of these really great series that I really recommend if you like the supernatural kind of stuff as well as if you really want a cute love romancy and you like that dark mysterious guy it's Kate Zombie it's a series called Erased it's actually only um, I believe it's five books long but the fifth book is only like extra stories where the actual uh, manga is only long. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. It is about um, a guy who can go backwards in time and stop things that are about to happen. So he sees it happen and then it will throw him back in time against his own will and then he has to fix what is wrong. So he ends up going back to when he was a child and he has to fix the death of a, of a girl who died in his class and it was a mysterious death who nobody could figure out who it was that killed her, what was going on. It's a really intense story. It's actually a really nice read. It's not very long. It took me a little bit to read just because I was reading it in between doing my work. Um, but it was actually a really good read and I recommend it. I do need to still watch the anime just to see how well they did on that. But I really enjoyed it and I thought it was a really good read. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was actually, like I said, not too long of a read. I thought it was really, really good. If you want more of like, um, it's not really romancy. It's more of like exciting, um, action-y, and just kind of like 
enough crime story, but like not full crime story. Although you are guessing like who is it, who did it, who do you think could be the culprit. Um, and it's really interesting to see like how he comes to these conclusions and what he can do even just as an 11 year old child. Alright, so next one I recommend. This one is not a series, but it is an author I've mentioned before. So in my comeback video, I did mention this one. So it is Junji Ito, because Junji Ito is amazing, and I love him to death. Um, I did read this one. It is called The Cat Diary, um, about Yan and Mu, and it's literally just about his two cats that he had, and one of them actually did pass away, unfortunately. Um, but it's really cute. It's just another manga. That he drew it isn't his style so it seems a little like horror like and very scary but actually they're just really cute stories about two cats that are just ridiculous and just go around doing silly things i recommend it just because again it's one of those really short reads it doesn't really take long to go through i did it like in like one night maybe like 20 minutes not even probably like 10 but it was a really cute read i enjoyed it i'm glad i bought it it's not even it wasn't that expensive either i got it for like 11 bucks at um Oh, which place did I get it? Anime Egg Roll, one of my favorite and going to make me broke places. Deuces. Um, the next one that I would recommend is Tokyo Ghoul. I have not finished. I am terrible. I am sitting on book eight. There's only 14. It's not that hard to read. Again, it just takes me forever because I try and read in between calls because when I get home, I don't necessarily have all the time because I'm doing videos for you guys or trying to edit or trying to take care of my crazy animals that I have. So sometimes I just don't find the time. But I do recommend Tokyo Ghoul. It is very action-y. Um, it's about, well, they're called ghouls, but pretty much a vampire type, uh, theme person. So instead of actually just draining the blood though, they eat people. So it's kind of cannibalism in a way, but I think it's really cool. Um, I really enjoyed the main character. He has a lot of turning points and I agree if he turns more than what I've already seen him turn, um, to just an amazing character that you really, I don't know if you like him or hate him. I just know there's, I think, like, different opinions on both sides of the plate. Right now, I love him, so I don't really know what's going to happen. I've been very much enjoying this, though. He ends up becoming a ghoul because a ghoul is chasing him and is about to kill him, and instead, she dies, and then he is on the brink of death, and so they end up transplanting her, I think it's her heart, if I remember correctly, into his body. It might be his liver. It's something. He, they transplant something, maybe a kidney. They transplant something of hers into his body. The blood pumps through his body, which is why I think it was his heart. I can't remember. I'm so bad now. Um, but they put her into his body and then he becomes a ghoul. So he's not full ghoul, he's only half ghoul. And then it becomes a whole thing of him having to deal with things in the ghoul world as well as trying to also live a normal human life because he never actually went away in the human world where most ghouls are pretty good at blending in or just kind of stay hidden. So it's really interesting. Like I said, I've only gotten to eight. I can't wait to watch the anime. I think I watched one episode before I started reading the manga and I was like, ah, no, 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 no. Let's pause this. I want to read it. All right, so the last of the five that I'm going to recommend that I've already read to you is again, another Junji Ito book. It's not a series. This one is a book on its own. It's called Gyo. It is literally about these mechanical things that have taken the fish in the sea and they have literally made them come back to life and start chasing to eat people. I don't know what page I flipped it open to. They are crazy. It is nuts. And there is a meme out there that is a giant shark <laughs> trying to bust through a door on these mechanical legs that look like spider legs. And it is from this book. I really recommend it. It's again a very uh, horror written series. I love Junji Ito. I love horror. Um, he's one of my favorite authors now. <laughs> Ever since I discovered him, I own pretty much almost every one of his works except for a couple that I just can't seem to find or they're just way too expensive to try and buy in the US because they're not available here yet. Um, the one that I still have yet to read is in my pile of recommendations that I'll show you in a minute, um, but I've pretty much read all the ones that I own. This is not a series, like I said, although if you get Gyo, there's also Tomi and Uzumaki that come in the same style, so I bought them all in this very similar looking style, um, and I really enjoy them. I think they're really cool. All right. So those are all the books that I've read and that I recommend reading. Now we're going to move on to just five books that, or slash series, that I would, um, because there's more to the series <laughs> that I would recommend reading that I'm going to read this year. My goal is to read a lot more this year than I have in a long time. So I really recommend, again, you guys doing it as well. And I'm going to go ahead and pull these books out for you. 
Okay, so first one on the top is of course a Junji Ito because it was the first book I had <laughs> sitting at the top of my pile. And it is the one book that I have not read by him that I own so far. And it is Uzumaki. It is a full story again. This one is all about um, spirals. Um, that's about the gist of what I know about it. I have not gone too far into knowing what it all is. I will read what's on the back there so you kind of get a synopsis. I have seen some small things from this book, unfortunately, as like memes and just pictures because I kind of zoom around just to look for his artwork because I love Junji Ito's artwork, but I really shouldn't because I haven't finished reading this one just yet. And again, if you look, it has the same style as Gyo. It's just that same really cool style. I also have the Tomi that looks just like this as well. Um, so the synopsis of this one is, I'm gonna say it wrong. Uh, Kurozu Cho, a small fog bound town on the coast of Japan, is cursed. According to Suichi Saito, the withdrawn boyfriend of teenager Kiri Goshima, their town is haunted not by a person or being, but a pattern. Uzumaki, the spiral, the hypnotic secret shape of the world. This bizarre masterpiece of horror manga is available in a single volume. Fall into a whirlpool of terror. It's really cool. Again, I love his artwork. I love his horror stories. They're all just really creepy, really scary. His art style is amazing. I'm gonna flip to a horrible, horrible page. Actually, let's just do the first page. If you look, just look at that. It's beautiful. Like even just the colors, the like pastel-y colors, it's just creepy in its own way. And then the way that the spirals just kind of move in. And I'm sure you guys have probably seen some every once in a while here and there if you're kind of looking around the internet. Um, but again, he's just a really great author. I enjoy him. This is probably one of my next stuff to read. I just have not gotten there yet. <laughs> okay, so the next one that I'm going to recommend to read is another manga. Um, it is by, I'm going to say it wrong again, Makoto Shinkai. And the art is actually by Yukiko Seikai. There is a book, but I did not get the book. I got the manga. Um, manga, whatever. Um, it's called Five Centimeters Per Second. It is a love story. Um, it looked very cute, which is why I got it. It's all just one story in this one big book. It is a little thick, um, but again, it is because it's all the art drawn out. Now, I do also have another book that was similar where it had the art drawn out, but I actually got the book version. It's called I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. It's really cute as well. It's also another kind of like lovey story. Um, that one's more about a girl who's dying because her pancreas is killing her. Um, but it's really cute. It's just kind of her going through like her stages um, with this boy who is the only one in her school who knows that she is on the verge of death. Uh, this one on the other hand though, it's just about these two that actually end up falling in love and they don't use like modern sources it sounds like. Again, I'm not really good at knowing what this is entirely about just because that short synopsis, it sounded really good to me. Um, I love love letters. I think they're so cute. So going back to a time when love letters were a thing, I think that's adorable. I remember passing notes in class to all the kids. <laughs> and no, I didn't necessarily pass any love letters um, just because I didn't get rejected in class and everybody see it because everybody's nosy. But I did have fun passing notes and this kind of what this reminds me of. So I always like those cheesy movies where they pass notes. They're like, hey, do you like me? Check yes or no. <laughs> so I really hope it's something cute like that. I can't wait to read it. Ah, I can't wait to read it because <laughs> I can't talk today um, but it looks really cute I like romance stories so I think it's gonna be a really good one all right so sticking with our romancy theme because I really like them romances man I can't help it I'm a big romantic and so romances are one of my favorites I actually have watched this manga um, as an anime but I haven't fully watched it because with this book um, I did read I did watch the anime and I really enjoyed the anime but they only got so far and then they quit so I really wanted to read the manga so for Christmas I got this and I don't have all of them just yet they are on the way a friend of mine ordered the rest of them but they just haven't shown up yet but it's Our Hour Ride or the American version is uh, Blue Spring Ride if I remember correctly uh, the name of the anime it's really cute it's a love story it's about um, this girl who had been terrified of boys she just thought they were scary and didn't want to hang out with them but there was one boy that she really really liked and had a crush on and then he accidentally heard her when they were young kids say that she didn't like boys even though he kind of had a little bit of a crush on her as well so they unfortunately part ways and when they get older they run into each other again and she still has a crush on him but he no longer has any feelings for her whatsoever of course he's been through a lot in life and 
he just remembers her saying, I don't like boys. So, the series starts, um, kind of does a little bit of a flashback to when they're kids to show this, and then it starts right away when they're back in high school and they meet each other again, and then it just kind of goes from there. So it's about their relationship and kind of like what happens between them and what's going to end up happening. I really hope they end up together because honestly, again, I haven't finished, but I think it's a really cute series. Um, if you haven't checked out the manga or the anime, I recommend both. The anime only goes so far and then it just quits, but the manga actually has, I believe, 12 in total and I own up to I want to say either eight or nine okay so our fourth book that I would recommend is just two two-part series um, and if you ever played the video game I don't know if you should read it before you play the video game or after because I've already played some of the video game but not all of it but I still want to read it so I might read it before I finish the video game it is near automata now I did dress up as um, Oh crud, what is her name? Is it B2? Oh, where is your name? From Pod, blah 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 blah. Okay, well, I kind of forget. Anyway, I think it's B2 is her name. I could be incorrect. Whatever, it's that chick right to there. This one right here. I dressed up as her at Anime STL last year. Um, again, I've played some of the game. I haven't finished the game. I'm a terrible person. It's totally fine. I do it on my own time. Um, but I did get these because I found them at V Stock whenever I went shopping for manga. And I was super excited. There's only two. And um, I don't think it matters which direction you read them in. I could be wrong. They do form a face. So I assume you might want to read the black one first and then the white one. Um, but one is just called Short Story Long and the other one's Long Story Short. But I can't wait. I, I'm super excited to get started. And then I think I'll finish the game after I read these. So that way maybe I have a little more history. So whenever I start playing these characters, I'm like, yeah, I enjoy you more. <laughs> but sometimes it's nice to have that backstory before you get started on finishing things. All right. So the last series that I'm going to recommend for you guys to read that I can't wait to read. And I'm a terrible person again because I actually watched the movie and then the TV show and finish that all the way through. So I haven't actually read the books themselves, but it makes me want to read the books more because I know there's going to be more things, more details that I'm missing, but I'm super excited for um, because I started collecting the very crappy <laughs> used versions. And then for Christmas, I got the really cool version that makes a picture, just like the Harry Potter books make the castle for Harry Potter. Um, I got the City of Bones. Uh, I forget her last name, Cassandra Clare, that's it, by Cassandra Clare. And if you look here, this is part of the picture that it makes. This is book one. So they make the really cool, um, like, it's like a picture of them by the bridge with a whole bunch of monsters that they have to do. So this book is about, um, oh crud, what is her name now? Clary Frey, thank you. I had to look at the back of the book. So this is about Clary Frey. She finds out that she is a part of what's called the shadow world and she is a shadow hunter. So shadow hunters face like demons, wizards, warlocks, stuff like that. And they have to uh, put them in their place if they're misbehaving. So they have to get rid of them, you know, vampires, stab them, hunt them down. Hence the shadow hunter part. So it's a really good series because what happens is she finds out she's a shadow hunter whenever she meets this boy who only she can see and then things get weird. So he kind of starts popping up. It is a little bit of a romance. However, there's a lot of action play in this. Um, there's some deep dark secrets that come into play. It's really cool. Again, it's like like angel demon thing. And there's a lot of like angels that come into play in this because the shadow hunters are actually descendants of angels. And it's really cool. I would check out um, the TV series after you read it just because I was an awful person and I didn't read it before the TV series. There is a movie, um, it has a completely different person than TV series, but there is a movie, it's Immortal Instruments, City of Bones. And then there is the TV series, which is called Shadow Hunters, is what the series is called. It's really good, I really enjoyed it. I watched it up to the very end, I cried, it was beautiful. It made me really wanna read this just because I know there's gonna be more details that I missed in there, um, but it's a really exciting story. All right, my little cubbies, that is all the recommendations and books that I have already read so far. Um, again, I, I would recommend checking out any of those books. I will try and throw up descriptions of anywhere I can find them online for you guys to check them out. Uh, more than likely, probably Amazon because 
that's my go-to spot. Or um, Barnes & Noble is one of my other favorite places to go to for a lot of things. But I really hope you guys recommend uh, me some of the books that you guys are reading. I really want to read some more. I do have a lot on my plate, but I really want to get started on reading hopefully quite a few books in a week. Um, just so that way I can kind of get back into the swing of things. I love reading. I miss doing it. It's such a great hobby and it really does take my mind off of things. But hey my little kippies, that's it for Manic Monday. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when these videos come out. And hey my little cubbies, until next time.